Welcome to our daily video devotion from Christ Lutheran Church in Pewaukee, Wisconsin. I am Pastor Tim Gerbing. Uh, today, let's take a look at 2 Samuel chapter 1, and I'll read there verses 5 to 12. Then David said to the young man who brought him the report, How do you know that Saul and his son Jonathan are dead? I happened to be on Mount Gilboa, the young man said, and there was Saul, leaning on his spear, with the chariots and their drivers in hot pursuit. When he turned around and saw me, he called out to me and said, What can I do? He asked me, Who are you? An Amalekite, I answered. Then Saul said to me, Stand here by me and kill me. I'm in the throes of death, but I'm still alive. So I stood beside him and killed him because I knew that after he had fallen, he could not survive. And I took the crown that was on his head and the band on his arm and have brought them here to my Lord. Then David and all the men with him took hold of their clothes and tore them. They mourned and wept and fasted till evening for Saul and his son Jonathan and for the army of the Lord and for the nation of Israel, because they had fallen by the sword. A fierce battle was fought between uh, the nation of Israel and their enemy, the Philistines. At the time Saul was the king of Israel, he was leading his troops, but things went horribly wrong. Three of his sons were killed in battle. The Israelite soldiers fled the battlefield. Saul found himself abandoned and alone on Mount Gilboa with his bodyguard. And he was surrounded by this encroaching enemy of the Philistines. Well, the fighting grew even fiercer, and a Philistine archer kind of took a pot shot, and he shot his arrow, and once you know, he hit his target. He hit Saul. Saul had a mortal wound. He was terrified of what the Philistines would do when they captured him. So he asked his armor bearer to kill him. But the young lad refused. He couldn't bring himself to kill Saul because Saul was anointed by God as his king. And so Saul killed himself. And when that happened, the young man, uh, he followed suit and he killed himself too. In the meantime, David was returning from fighting a different enemy. He was fighting the Amalekites. And uh, when he returned, a stranger who happened to be an Amalekite showed up before David with a message for David. And he informed David that Saul and Saul's son, Jonathan, who was David's best friend, were both killed in battle. This messenger thought he could gain David's favor, maybe get some kind of reward from David. So he lied about how Saul died. He said that he happened to stumble upon, upon Saul while he was dying and that Saul had asked him to kill him because of his fear of being tortured by the Philistines. And so this messenger told David that he did exactly as Saul asked. Now this man did not expect David to react the way he did. Immediately David and his men, they tore their clothes in sorrow and they all mourned for Saul and for all the other Israelites who died in battle. And then... David ordered that the messenger who claimed to have killed Saul be brought before him. And he gave the command that that man be executed for murdering God's anointed king. David's reaction is kind of surprising because when, when Saul had learned years earlier that God would make David king to replace him, uh, Saul became filled with hatred of David and he spent his final years doing everything that he could to track down David and kill him. David did something that we all need to practice doing. We never want to celebrate the evil things that people do, but at the same time, we should never fill our hearts with hatred toward our enemies. Always remembering that every living human being, no matter how evil they may be, uh, they are still loved by God. Jesus came to pay for everyone's sins. His death on the cross did do that. Only by giving up his life for everyone's sins could anyone be saved. So let's remember that. 
Remember that whomever God loves, he expects us to love too. Jesus said, after all, God so loved the world. Let's make it our life's mission to love our enemies, just as Jesus tells us to pray for them, and to do our best to bring that message of Christ to as many people as we can. Amen.